Flumps. Formidable flumps. Too long have flumps been the butt of the joke throughout the D&D multiverses. And you might look at these simple jellyfish looking monsters and think to yourself, these are way too silly to feature in my gritty, grim, dark fantasy campaign. Well, I am here to tell you, I am here to seize back the dignity of the humble, stinky flump and inform you that with enough care and attention, a flump can be just as formidable as any other monster. Also, I was dared to make this video. My name is Ben Byrne, and this is how to make flumps formidable in your dark fantasy campaign. This week's video is brought to you by Aurora. Age of Desolation, a brand new campaign setting for 5th edition, brought to you once again by Ghostfire Gaming. You can check a link to the Kickstarter in the description. And this world has been birthed out of the mind of Sean Merwin, who has worked on other projects such as the Grim Hollow Monster Grimoire and the Acquisitions Incorporated D&D 5e book supplement. Sorry, just need a moment to catch my breath. You've got dragons, five of them, each ruling over one of the five realms of Aurora with their regional effects ratcheted up to 11, which means you got to survive Aurora, bro, oh. before you can manage to... <laughs> All right, wait, no, I can recover this. To explore Aurora, first you've got to survive it. Check it out. There's a link to the Kickstarter below this video, and I will see you in Aurora. Aurora, Aurora, Aurora. There are four easy, simple to follow steps to making flumps in your dark fantasy campaign formidable. And they are number one, to consider the lore of flumps, the deep in-depth lore featured throughout the multiple editions of D&D. Step number two, to consider the themes of flumps. What is it you're trying to communicate to your players by featuring formidable flumps in your D&D campaign? Number three is, I need to, <laughs> Number three is, of course, to carefully craft your formidable flump story and how they're being presented to the players. And number four is to play around with the flump stat block, give them a few extra abilities that maybe make them a little bit more dangerous, a bit more formidable, but of course they still need to be flumps, mainly for me to win the bet to this video. Admittedly, there's not a deep well of lore to draw on for the Flump, because the Flump is not a creature that has been featured throughout human mythology, like dragons and vampires and ghosts. And so you basically just need to read back on uh, some earlier editions of D&D. The Flump dates back to AD&D days when it was featured in the Fiend folio. And what lore is there, admittedly, is kind of cool. They are very unique creatures. And I think the things that are fundamental to maintain, to make sure the creatures that you are presenting in your dark fantasy campaign are flumps, are that they draw air through their top mouth hole <laughs> and expel it out the bottom. And that's what sort of keeps them afloat or they have an anti-gravity sort of uh, magical aura around them, but they move around by expelling the air. Uh, number two, that they are lawful good creatures uh, that are telepathic and they roam around in the underdark uh, feeding on the telepathic energy of other creatures, typically like mind flayers who have a lot of mental energy, but they cause no pain in doing this. The mind flayers don't know necessarily that the flumps are feeding on them. And number four or three, I'm not sure I lost count there, but the point being that the last thing is that flumps tend to move around in like nomadic cloisters. So you've got uh, a society where there's no particular leader. They just kind of hover around feeding on this telepathic energy. Now that's what's given in the history of D&D. And it's admittedly not a lot to go on when you're trying to make flumps uh, feel dark fantasy, but there is definitely some outside influences, whether the flumps were directly inspired by, they're definitely reminiscent of Lovecraft's mythos. These alien, aberrant creatures that are completely beyond the ability of human understanding to what they are. When you see a flump, it looks utterly weird. There's disconnect in the mind. It doesn't look like any animal except for maybe a jellyfish, which brings me to my next point, which is the other thing that you can draw on for inspiration are pictures of jellyfish. Google creepy jellyfish because that's what I did to try and get inspiration of how you can present flumps. They don't need to look like these cute little floating individuals with these like innocent looking eye stalks. They can look 
utterly alien with wispy tentacles or slug-like tentacles, or maybe they look like cauliflower just kind of dangling out beneath them. You can describe your flumps as having all of their internal organs floating around in the air around them, or maybe they're somewhat transparent so you can see into their uh, internal organs as they're floating around inside of the flump. So now we have some darker mythoses to draw from and some physical uh, descriptions that we can give the players that make flumps feel more terrifying. We can now focus on the themes of flumps, the, the themes of flumps. So flumps themselves aren't a particularly threatening creature, but what do they represent? What are you trying to communicate to your players? And I suppose for me, flumps represent the danger of the underdark and the uh, danger of the unknown, the fear of the unknown, the intrusion of other world type creatures and forces intruding into the mortal realm. Even though flumps themselves aren't that dangerous, they're hanging out with mind flayers and gith and beholders who they're feeding on the mental energy of. So when you have flumps in your campaign, chances are those much more dangerous creatures aren't far behind. And so flumps represent the heralding of danger from another space entering into the mortal plane. Flumps themselves are alien looking and aberrant and unknowable. And especially if you have a D&D party that isn't super down with the deep lore and history of Dungeons and Dragons, and they don't know what a flump is, you can present them as being dangerous themselves. And so there's a theme of fear of the unknown and fear in ignorance because your player characters don't know that flumps aren't all that dangerous themselves. You can present them as being dangerous and then the escalation of the danger when the mind flayers or the beholders or whatever other aberrant creatures arrive when the flumps arrive into your campaign or are present when the flumps arrive into your campaign can kind of continue to carry the danger that the flumps themselves, through no fault of their own, represent. So when we were first joking about making this video, uh, originally I dismissed it. I was like, ha ha ha, flumps aren't formidable. But then this idea kept coming back to me about the story in which I would couch flumps to make them seem formidable. I think that's what's going to be important to making them seem formidable in your campaign is coming up with a good story for them. You can use this one or something similar to it. First bit of advice I think is to definitely present flumps when they're uh, when the party are a lower level because they're not gonna be a particular threat to a higher level party. And so it's a sleepy little village. Everybody starts experiencing these horrible alien nightmares. They start seeing images of tentacles and dark caverns with alien architecture. They start seeing folks being disemboweled and experimented on and empty craniums with no brain inside. They see these creatures with wickedly long fingers and sort of feeling tentacles for faces. They see brains kind of displayed on a dinner plate that have been cut into with a, a sort of alien looking knife and fork. I'm not sure what an alien knife and fork looks like, but you get the idea that these incredibly vivid, but also incredibly disturbing images are starting to really drive the villagers a little bit crazy. Now, the idea for this is that flumps can communicate telepathically, but it doesn't say that they can speak common in their stat block in 5e. It says that they can understand under common, but they can't speak themselves. So the idea here is that the only way the flumps can communicate is by being beaming these disturbing images into the minds of the humans that they're trying to warn about the impending Mind Flayer invasion. There is a portal to the Underdark near the village, maybe a cave that the players go to when they're investigating these terrible visions, these terrible nightmares, and that's when they first encounter these alien-looking flumps who beam images into the player characters' minds of these horrible, violent, alien, gross, othering sort of scenes. Hopefully that will create conflict between the player characters and the flumps, especially if they don't know what flumps are. That leans into that theme that we, we mentioned before of fear of the unknown and violence through ignorance that flumps can sort of represent, but also fear of a greater threat because once the flumps are or aren't dealt with, whatever happens there in your campaign, then the mind flayers come or the gith or whatever it happens to be, whatever other threat the flumps are trying to warn about arrives. And so maybe the flumps might seem just like minions of these creatures when they finally arrive to face the party or maybe the party figure out that they were actually just the vanguard. They were trying to warn about the greater threat. In either 
either case, you've accomplished your goal of making flumps formidable. If you have flumps reappear when the party are level eight, nine, 10, something like that, they're not gonna be a physical threat to the party anymore, but hopefully they will have left enough of an impression and the party will remember, oh no, this means something worse is about to happen again. So now we're getting down to the meat and potatoes of making flumps formidable. What happens when the player characters actually engage in a combat? Because flumps, by reputation and literally when you read their stat block in the 5th edition monster manual, are not particularly dangerous. They've got an acid attack from their tentacles, which does a little bit of damage. And they've also got uh, a fart attack where they sort of fart on somebody and it, it stinks them up. What's it got? Like stink spray or something like that. And that doesn't do any damage. It can just sort of temporarily incapacitate someone. I think it might force them to move away. I read it the other day, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the point being, not particularly dangerous. And if they get knocked prone, of course, they find it quite hard to get back up. Let's add a few abilities here. We want the flumps to remain flumps. So we're not gonna do anything too radical, but just give them a few extra little things. For example, the flump stink spray actually had acid in it as well. Make it do a little bit of acid damage. You read about how painful it is uh, to get a jellyfish sting. I've never been stung by a jellyfish before, but I've heard that it's very painful. And in the case of a box jellyfish, quite dangerous, um, as well as doing acid damage, have the potential to incapacitate for a round as well. There's some sort of save DC, and if you don't succeed, the pain just rakes your whole body and you can't move, uh, you can't think because of it. Flumps are also telepathic creatures, as we've talked about, and their only real way to communicate in this formidable form that we've given them is to project uh, horrifying images into the minds of those that they're around. So what if they have some form of mental attack? Maybe you can give them a, a mind blast that's not dissimilar to mind flayers. Maybe it gets more powerful if you have like a, a community, a cloister, if you will, of flumps together. They can do an extra D4 or an extra D6 of damage to the mind blast if more than one flump are putting into it. Or what if actually when the flumps take damage, they scream mentally. And so that inflicts pain on anybody who is near them, kind of like a, an ear splitting scream, but it's not a scream. It's a projection of the flump witnessing its own death or anticipating its own death. And so it projects out all these really dark, mortifying feelings of imminent doom and, and mortality. And so that can do psychic damage, kind of like how an elemental does fire damage, a fire elemental does fire damage damage to anybody who hits it with a melee attack. Anybody within five feet or 10 feet of a flump when it takes, or maybe it's it, the range of its telepathy, when it takes damage, everybody else takes psychic damage, um, except for other flumps, because they understand what's going on, equal to like a D6 or something like that. Then when the flump actually dies, and of course you're gonna have more than one flump, they move around in cloisters, it starts to dissolve. It's like the acid inside of its body just starts to eat it instantly. It, it's disgusting and horrifying and aberrant to witness this body just tear itself apart or dissolve itself then and there. And it releases the stink sack that's holding all the, the stink spray just bursts and releases that. So anybody who's within five feet of a flump when it is reduced to zero hit points is now subject to the stink spray ability and they have to make that saving throw again. Even if they've made it before or maybe the DC is a little bit higher because this is like, you know, a, a really concentrated burst of it coming out of the, the flump's remaining. Maybe the acid in the flump's tentacles are still present. And so if you want to salvage from a flump, you need to make a survival check to avoid taking acid damage from its remains as well. If you want to get those valuable magical crafting items that flumps are known for, you've got to be really careful or you're taking a D6 or a D10 of acid damage just for fooling around, fooling around, just to avoid taking the acid damage from its, its remains. Lots of little abilities that don't necessarily make the flumps deadly. They will do a bit more damage, but it just makes them frustrating and dangerous and, and not irritating, but uh, formidable perhaps to get into a combat with because the players know once they face them the first time that they're not easy to deal with. You're gonna take some damage if you decide to tangle with a flump one way or the other. <laughs> 
And that's it. That is how to make flumps formidable, to present them in a formidable light in your D&D 5e campaign. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope there's going to be a lot more terrifying flumps at the game table. If you've ever featured flumps in your campaign before, or if you go on to feature flumps after watching this video, let me know about it. I want to read about it in the comments down below. Of course, like, subscribe, do all those good things. It helps out the channel. And we will, of course, be back next week with another D&D 5e video. Until then, keep flumps formidable. Flumps, flumps. Flumps, flump, flump, flumps, 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 flump, flumps, 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 flump, 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 flumps, flump, 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 flumps, flumps, flump, flumps, the the flump, 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 flumps, flump, flump, flumps, 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 flump, flump.